Hey guys, so today I'm just gonna take you through my Saturday session. Uh, traditionally, it's a push session uh, or a max effort pressing session. At the moment, I am just coming back from a few injuries here and there and just recomping effectively from last season. So this one is a little bit more GPP based. It's a little bit more movement based and there's gonna be quite a bit of volume. Uh, mainly things to basically imbalance my left and right pec. Um, I've already done my warm up. However, the next few movements are gonna be like my movement prep before I get into the main body of the session. So first exercise is gonna be a bottoms up kettlebell press. I'm going reasonably heavy on this. And one of the main things I'm focusing on is pausing in the bottom. What that's gonna do is improve my rack position from when it's on my pec and just get my scapula working nice and being used to holding a log or a barbell or whatever implement it me, maybe a dumbbell. It's just gonna get me in that isometric position and get used to it again. Yeah. I'm gonna superset that with a single arm high cable row. My main thing here is a bit of rotation and also making sure my scapula is tracking correctly. I did a few sets of overhead press already. So that fellas. Oh, happy birthday, Steve. You want to Hi, buddy. You okay? Yeah, how's it going? Um, do you need a day pass? Certainly. Well, of course we offer day passes. Second. Crack on with training. We'll yeah, sort yeah. a day pass after. Oh, nice. Cheers. Yeah. Do you know what you're doing, right? You look like you do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't try for quite, quite a lot of iconic stuff, so but I just ask. I started using these not so long back. They're hook grip Russian knee wraps. Now, the reason I'm using them rather than knee sleeves for weightlifting is sometimes I get a bit of patella pain or knee pain when I'm split jerking a lot. And what these allow me to do, they're only a light bandage, but they allow me to put more pressure on certain areas of my knee than other. So if I want more on my patella, and also if I want it higher and lower, I can choose. Whereas with a knee sleeve, it's on, it's on, and there's not really much in terms of give. So I wrap different to most. I want my knee coming in because my knee traps out some years of trying to push it out. So a little different because most people have the opposite problem. <laughs> I just wrap these around, similar to a pallet and knee wrap. So I'm looking for half coverage on each one. And I'm gonna go a little higher than I would with my knee sleeve. And then once I've run out of bandage, I'm gonna stick it up. Not as, uh, not as much application as you would with your knee wraps for a squat, but just gives me an extra bit of support and a little bit higher up my leg. Be good if I got it the right way, eh? Cool. I have a slight little bend in my knee. The more torque I want, the further. 
come back. Oh, I thought the shot is straight I get. Just half, so like what I want from there. I look to go half cross there. So that bit of bandage there, the full bit, I'm going to cover with half of the other. So on a lot of new apps, there's a line down the middle. On these, there isn't. So you'll notice more and more. And then I just took him. Voila. You're do the infamous, this is how you do your wrist wraps. I was thinking that. <laughs> I'm not going to do the wrist wraps because there's a video on my Instagram that you can go and see. That's probably my most watched video of how to actually wear wrist wraps because most people don't seem to know. So this set, I'm going to take it for a single, see how it feels, uh, and then we'll go from there. Everything in my sessions predominantly is on feel at the moment. Coming back from being a bit injured, I can't just run in. So it will be as and when. As I start coming up, my warm-up sets will be singles until I get to my working sets. You'll notice in my sets, I pause and eat split jerks in my warm-up sets. This is just to make sure I've got an equilibrium as where I want to land. So I'm not leaning too far forward or backwards. So as it gets heavier, I don't lose the bar forward or bail out the front. So I would advise doing that if you try to learn the split jerk. My two top tips for that would be drilling the split jerk, pausing in the bottom, and making sure your front rack actually works. You don't want to be holding on your nose. It's just going to cause a lot of pain in your wrist and the transfer from your dip to the actual jerk is not going to be very good. So you'll notice when I do any jerk variation, a lot of times I don't wear elbow sleeves. Now, the reason for this is it impedes my rack position. I don't have the world's best rack position. It's a lot better than a lot of strong men. It's still not good. It used to be up here. I'm sure now it's here. So that little bit of compression stops me from getting into a nice rack. And I don't really need them for support in the pressing motion. You will get away with an SPD normal elbow sleeve. But if you start wearing, you know, extreme elbow sleeves, triple ply and things like that, your rack position will be terrible. And the transfer from your legs to the jerk won't be very good. Because that's what I'm going to have to use my next comp. So right. I warmed up the split jerk because it's not my best variation, whereas power jerk is much better for me. So my next comp, I've got log in, uh, and I'm probably going to power jerk it. So next comp is SCL Worlds in Finland and Helsinki in June. And then like a couple of weeks later, I've got Ultimate Worlds in Germany. So key with those, one, I've got a medley, one, I've got log and Viking press. So the Viking press, I'll just use a push press because obviously that's what I'm going to use. Um, for the medley, I'll probably use power jerk for the first two. Then it's a block and I'll use push or strip press. And then the last one is dumbbell. So I'll use my traditional jerk on that. So often I want a split jerk, but because power jerk's a natural pattern for me, I can just hop into it. Allows me time to do my split jerk training and then swap over to power jerk as and when I want. Right guys, next exercise. So that was my primary exercise, the split jerk. This is obviously my assistance. So I'm gonna do a neutral grip incline press. Uh, I'm gonna hit that for five sets of 10. 
Eccentric's gonna be two seconds down, tempo rather. Two seconds down, two second pause, fast up, slight hold at the top. I'm gonna superset that with a dumbbell Y raise. So that's just gonna help with that stability factor at the top. And obviously the dumbbell press, it's just gonna be some assistance work for my pressing. Reason I've chose neutral grip is just to swap it up. But one of the big things is I like it transfers over to log press the same grip. Notice as I'm doing it, I'm trying to keep my elbows tucked in. I'm not winging them out. So I'm not this. Big Alex. See you soon, boy. Good luck. That's what the, the content we did at the moment is just me reloading. Hello, content. Hello, content. <laughs> Hello, content. Hello, content. Hello, content. You've got a lovely bunch of boys here, mate. Yeah, they're all friendly, aren't they? Good community. Yeah, we try. So we're gonna do extra standard bent over row, a little hold at the top. I'm gonna super sat that with TRX rows, some for the external rotation and some to the chest. So a lot of the program we do at Maverick, we give long rest periods to high skill movements and low skill movements that I've been doing for years and that my clients are comfortable with such as the row in different variations, curls, extensions, traditional isolation movements. I don't give a lot of rest because our aim is hypertrophy or structural balance improvements. So symmetry from left to right effectively. These movements are to help other movements. I want to elicit, as you can tell, I want to be out of breath a little bit. I also want to not allow the muscle to rest for too long because that's what we're training, the muscle. When we're training, the heavy high skill movements, often what we're training is the neural side of things, not muscular. So we're training the brain and how it displays the central nervous system pathway towards the muscle fibers. So those movements, what we need is one, two, three reps, a short rest, one, two, three minutes, and then back in at lighter weights, at heavy weights, five to 10 minutes. And at really heavy weights, we might take 15 to 20 minute rest. To make sure our central nervous system is fully recovered and able to send that hard electric pulse from the brain to the muscle via the nervous system and make sure we can exert maximum force maximal strength hence why it's called the max effort method what we're going to do now is just a superset concerning ourselves with biceps and triceps obviously we still need to train those but how we train those as strength athletes is a little different we're obviously going to want to change the grip Obviously going to help the forearm a lot. And the other thing we're going to do is I'm going to use a body weight element for my triceps. I'm also going to do a seated variation for the dumbbell. And the main reason here is I want to take my arm for its full extension and flexion portion of the bicep and actually the shoulder complex too. To make sure the top of my bicep tendon where it connects across the pec is stretched and trained its full range so I don't get any injuries. Notice when I'm doing it, I'm actually changing the angle of my wrist as well. Just gonna strengthen that forearm up a little bit. I'm gonna do a tricep movement with just body weight. So we're gonna do a TRX body weight score crusher. And the rep range here, I'm not too concerned. I'm just gonna do two or three sets. But what I am concerned about is how well I perform the movement. Notice that I'm turning my arms to get as much range as possible. It's also good for my mid-back for those split jerks, everything I need in the rack position. And the way I'm gonna progress that, it's a little easy, is just by lowering the suspension trainer or the TRX. And again, I'm straight back in. Don't be fucking about in between your supersets. The point is they reduce time. If the aim is strength nearer to a peak, you might need a longer rest. But if you're just using hypertrophy, don't be fucking around your phone. 
Get a set dunk. Right, I'm going to finish off with some leg raises. The last exercise I'm going to do is just a hanging leg raise. Now, I'm going to use the dip handles because I'm heavy. Uh, I won't get as much movement quality if my arms are above my head. So I like this variation. Also allows me to get an isometric across my pecs and my triceps after working them throughout the session. If you watched that the whole way through, thank you very much. If you want to ask any questions about that workout, or likewise, you want to discuss things like online coaching, face-to-face -face coaching, or gym membership, or consultation calls, drop me a message and make sure you give me a follow.